So here we are, November 8th, 2016, the evening of election night, and most people don't trust Hillary, yet many of them seem ready to vote for her. Maybe that's because they've forgotten the ancient wisdom about cycles. Empires have ended this way many times before, with the rise of corrupt demagogues accusing their opposition of their own crimes, while at the same time they make promises they can't possibly keep, as Hillary has been doing. It's a cycle. This is something that ancient people around the world once understood, but which most modern people don't. Almost 25 years ago, when I began to talk about social cycles, I was shocked by the hostility to the idea. But today, one of the cycles I wrote about is becoming increasingly evident. Millions of people are talking about it, and soon it'll be undeniable. I wish I could claim credit for this growing awareness, but that belongs primarily to Martin Armstrong, whose blog has a huge international following. One of those cycles has reached a catalyzing event today, which will decide whether this cycle will end hard or merely difficult. That event is the election in the United States for president. If Hillary wins, it will end hard and 2018 will be tumultuous, to say the least. This has nothing to do with Hillary being a woman, although that's what the feminist faction of cultural Marxism would have you believe. It's because she's part of the criminal elite who, for decades, have been working to destroy what made America, despite its many faults, better than other countries. They want to turn it into another cesspool, one they can rule. The alternative is a guy who, despite his now lavish lifestyle, worked for a living and earned his fortune. By all accounts, he's gregarious and congenial, but he's also a tough negotiator who can be very pragmatic when backed into a corner, the kind of guy you want in your corner. He's no saint, but neither is he a criminal, unlike Hillary, whom the elites on both the left and the right want and are protecting. For them, she represents the status quo and will perpetuate the policies that will continue to make you and me less well-off and more poor, while further enriching the crony capitalists and their political puppets. Trump may not be the candidate we would have liked for president, but if elected, he may go down in history as exactly the president we needed, the right person at the right time. Eight years ago, the left told us we needed our first black president, that he would unite the nation and bring racial harmony. His success in that matter can be summed up in four words, Black Lives Matter riots. He was going to restore our economy. His success in that can be summed up in official federal statistics showing that despite the fact that boomers are retiring later and working longer, the labor participation rate is still at lows not seen since the late 1970s, which was a time when most married women were stay-at-home housewives. Obama was going to bring peace and won the Nobel Peace Prize. Instead, we've been continuously at war from the very beginning of his administration. Now the left, and neocons on the right, are telling us we need our first female president. If our first black president was such a dismal failure, how much worse will our first female president be if that president is Hillary Clinton? And if Hillary is elected President Clinton, the backlash I began warning about in 1993 will turn into a raging inferno. I don't know if it'll be violent. I hope not. I hope the political process will be allowed to work. I hope it can be done at the ballot box. But woe we'll betide those who dare to stand in its way. For we may not be anonymous, but we are many. And we are on the verge of becoming very, very angry.